The Crypto.com card has just become useless. No, honestly, last month they removed the staking benefits from the lower tier cards like this one and removing arguably the best feature of the cards, the free Spotify and Netflix. So today we're going to look at what exactly this means for Crypto.com cards and why they've taken this decision, which let's be honest, is going to annoy a lot of card holders. Yesterday, I received an email from Crypto.com about my Ruby card, which I currently own. These emails will forever haunt me as bad news about the staking reduction email from just a couple of months ago. So when I received this email titled Crypto.com Visa Card Update, I expected the worst. To summarize the email, it said that basically if you own a Royal Jade Green Card, Royal Indigo, or Ruby Steel card, you will continue to get your 100% cost reimbursed for a further six months, and then this benefit will cease to exist. Now, if you're lucky enough to have an icy white, frosted rose gold, or infamous obsidian card, you're okay because the rewards will continue to be given out. But not everyone, including myself, has the minimum $30,000 to drop into a card just for the benefit of free Spotify and Netflix. You can literally drop $0 and subscribe to this channel for free for life. I know which provides more value. Oh, you do actually get Amazon Prime as well with the Crypto.com card, but still the point stands. Collectively, those subscriptions would set you back, what, maximum $400 a year. So to lock up $30,000 just for that benefit is mind boggling to me. So what do I do when they make announcements like this in terms of reduction in rewards? Well. I take to Twitter and instantly load up the Crypto.com Twitter page, mainly to see how they made the announcement and then read all the juicy comments that followed from fellow DGEN investors. It would be no surprise that the general reaction to the announcement was very negative, with my favourite tweet and the situation being summed up perfectly by Timmy Chung saying, then this card is useless. And that leads us on to our next point is, is this card actually useless now? I'd say like a chocolate teapot. That is, of course, unless you're planning on dropping the minimum $30,000 to earn the 3% cashback rewards and will use it to make some big purchases. Other than that, the rewards for subscriptions, as I've already said, is really just a gimmick. At those locked-in prices and the features for using the card abroad, etc., which, let's be honest, can be covered by others like Revolut. So why did Crypto.com make this announcement? And what were they expecting from such an announcement? Well, it should be no surprise to you that we're currently in a bear market, and this brings about different challenges for crypto projects, none so much as ensuring that these projects are sustainable and can continue to run, hopefully, into that next bear market. We've already seen what has happened with the likes of Voyager and Celsius, and we are now starting to see crypto projects and exchanges start to come out and protect themselves from this happening to them. Again, it should be no surprise to you that marketing is probably the single largest expense of most of these crypto projects, especially in the early stages when they're trying to get off the ground. Marketing can take many different forms and shapes, but one of the most popular is the new customer incentives, which is the category that free Netflix and Spotify for Crypto.com users falls into. See, every time someone signs up to Crypto.com and uses the feature of redeeming free Spotify, Crypto.com has to then issue that account with a refund via their native token. This doesn't just cost nothing and is a form of marketing in the hope that you sign up to the card, use it for other features, and they somehow earn some more transaction fees or other types of fees from you in the future, which basically means they can make that money that they've paid out in terms of these rewards. In bear markets where prices seem to just be climbing higher and higher, this is okay. Those small costs in terms of free Spotify are far outweighed by the fees Crypto.com earns from you as a user. But in bear markets, when transactions are much lower and they are still having to reimburse Spotify, it starts to become a problem. So what's the first thing that gets cut during a bear market? Well, it's marketing expenses. First, it was staking rewards, then it was the introduction of this top-up fee, and now it's the final piece, removal of subscriptions after six months. All of which means the benefits of using the crypto card become rather redundant. But it's not just Crypto.com who have been cutting marketing costs during the bear market. You can take Coinbase, for instance. They have just announced they will be taking away the referral bonus they offer to new customers, which gives away free Bitcoin for each successful referral. 
Now, many people think the reason behind this is more concerning than I personally do, but it does support the reason for why Crypto.com have removed the free subscription. These businesses are protecting themselves during this bear market. They're ultimately scared of mismanagement and becoming that next voyager in the crypto world. By the way, don't be surprised if we hear of liquidation concerns from people around Crypto.com in the coming days and weeks ahead. And that will be really off the back of this removal of free subscriptions. We live in a time where there is generally a lot of fear in markets right now. That fear in the markets can also explain the current price actions of Crypto.com's native token, after they made this announcement, it would be no surprise to people that people started to dump their Crow tokens. And this means the price started to crash down, not catastrophically, but enough to be noticeable. This is against a general incline over the past week where Crow has moved from 10 cents to 14 cents. But this announcement has pushed it back down to that 13 cents level. And I'll expect that after the six months of these free subscriptions, which carries on for now, finishes in January, we'll see an even bigger sell-off of the tokens as people look elsewhere to hold their crypto money. It is worth mentioning here that Crypto.com have been burning tokens at a rapid pace over recent weeks, and this has been one of the contributing factors in that price appreciation. Also, Bitcoin's movements do have an implication on this, but the rate at which they are minting the tokens means ultimately the burning is not working. Crypto.com needs to move towards sustainability, which is a buzzword in the crypto space, I know, and that means taking decisions like this to reduce the rewards through staking and the benefits from holding the subscriptions. No one likes the fact, myself included, but for these projects, it works out for the longer term. They do have to make decisions like this for the longer term for the overall benefit of the project. Reducing these rewards means reducing the minted tokens. And if the burns of tokens remains the same or continues to grow, then supply and demand, this should mean that the price appreciation of Crow token happens. By the way, they could reverse this decision in the next bull market, and it could be a temporary solution they've just put in place. They don't mention that it's permanent, although I suspect it probably is, and it's just the perfect timing for them to announce it with so much bad news out there at the moment in the crypto market. As a Ruby card holder, I have to decide what I'm going to do with my card. And although the video thumbnail implies I'm going to cut this in half, there are two reasons why I won't be doing that. The first is this card's actually metal. Those scissors are cheap and it simply wouldn't work. I don't think anyway. But the second reason is I still have six months of free Spotify to take and therefore I'm in no rush to move off the platform and stop using the card for the time being. I'll just continue as usual with the Ruby card, not making any large top ups other than to pay my Spotify. The 1% rewards basically ultimately wiped out by this 1% top up fee and therefore actually using the card for anything else is rather pointless. After these six months, I'll see what they've decided to introduce or continue to take away as it seems and decide what to do next. I am curious, however, as to what you as card holders are deciding to do with the card going forward. Let me know in the comments section below and best suggestions as to what to do with the card next. Should I cut it up? Should I do something else? I'll pin the best comment down below, best or funniest. I don't mind either way. Cheers for watching, guys.